New Testament reading today comes from the 21st chapter of the book of Matthew, verses 28 to 32. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. The father went to the second son and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. I just go to God. Gracious God, be with us this day. Create in each of us a pure heart and put a right spirit in us as we hear your word. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me, there was, a, there was a pastor, a minister, who woke up on Sunday morning and it was just such a beautiful day, he decided he just had to play golf. Don't worry, I don't golf. <laughs> so he called his associate pastor and told him that he was <coughs> really sick. <coughs> and he convinced him to preach for him that day. So now, about the time that the worship service was beginning, the pastor was out of town about 60 miles away, and he was on a golf course on this beautiful day. There was no one there but him, and he was really, really enjoying himself. He set up the first tee, everything was beautiful and perfect, and he was having a great day golfing. Now, unbeknownst to him, Peter and God were up in heaven, and they were watching everything that was taking place. And Peter said to God, you're not going to let him get away with this, are you? And the Lord sighed and he said, no, I guess not. And just as the man swung off the next tee, God gave a little wink to Peter. And just then the man's ball hit a straight, perfect shot towards the pin, dropping just short of a hole rolling and falling in for a 435 yard hole in one. See, Peter was astonished and he looked at the Lord and said, what would you let me do that for? And lots of you are knowing it. Because God's answer was, who is he going to tell? <laughs> As Christians, we make decisions each day that reflect who we are as God's people. Even when we are alone, we represent God in this world, and it's important to do things as if someone was watching, because someone always is. In our scripture today, Jesus tells a parable about a man with two sons. These sons and the decisions that they made demonstrate that what we do or what we don't do for God matters. So let's give some time to this parable. In this story, Jesus was making a connection between the Jewish leaders of his time and others in society that were considered forgotten or not on equal terms with the Jewish people. The Jewish leaders were the, were the son in this parable who, when the father said, go and work in the vineyard, he answered, I go, sir, but then he didn't go. And the tax collectors, and in scripture it does say the word prostitute, the tax collectors and the others were the son that when the father said, go and work in the vineyard, he answered, I will not go, but then eventually changed his mind and went. The nation of Israel were the chosen people of God. When they were asked to follow and obey God's ways, they said absolutely, but then ultimately they did not do it. They did, rejected Jesus as God's messenger. And then there were those that were viewed as outcasts, those that were hated and feared so much that they probably never even thought that the kingdom of God was open to them. So they said no to God, but eventually they came to God and obeyed and followed God's ways. 
So now the question begins, do our lives reflect a faithful people who make promises to God but can't see them through? Or do we live as if we really don't have time to God, but then eventually we live in God's ways? As we live our lives, then it's important that we are true to who we are. This parable conveys that it doesn't matter who you are in God's eyes, it matters how you are living for God. And this parable also teaches us that our actions always speak louder than our words. We can make all the promises that we want, but until we actually do what we say, our promises are just words. The son who promised to go and work, he was very kind and respectful when he spoke to his father. He answered him by saying, I will go, sir. But in reality, it mattered not what he said or even how he said it. His words were empty and his promise went unfulfilled. We discover this truth throughout our lives. If we want to become known as honest, dependable, truthful, reliable people, then we need to show that by what we do. Claiming Christianity is never enough. Demonstrating the love of God is obligatory to our faith journey. Now in verse 31, Jesus says, which of the two did what the father wanted? And the answer from the crowd was the first, or the son who said no, but then eventually respected the father's wishes. Now here is what William Barclay says of this parable. Neither son in the story was the kind of son to bring full joy to his father. Both were unsatisfactory. But the one who in the end obeyed was incalculably better than the other. The ideal son would have been the son who accepted the father's orders with obedience and with respect. Neither son's behavior is good. What we need to do is follow the example of the third son, the one that Barclay mentions that was full of obedience the ideal son. So how do we do that? How do we mean what we say? How do we keep our promises? How do we live as people who put their faith into action? How can we without fail love and trust and respect and obey God? How can we be expected to stay on God's path, to live as God's light, and to move at the impulse of God's love. The answer is simple. Implementing the answer is hard. We can become that ideal child of God, full of trust and obedience, virtue and dependability, when we give up control and let Christ be the Lord of our lives. In his book, The Jesus Way, this is what Eugene Peterson said. I am interested in the way that Jesus leads because they are necessarily the ways in which I follow. I cannot follow Jesus any which way I like. My following must be consonant with his leading. The way Jesus leads and the way that I follow Jesus are sin the altar. We live a life of obedience when we are connected to Jesus in a way that makes us interdependent with our Lord. Now there was a young man named Brian. I say young man, I've come to realize lately that I've defined the word young when I meet someone and they are chronologically young enough to be my child but now a young man or a young woman. So you can pick the age of how old this person is. This was a young man who was driving around the town during his lunch hour. It was a drizzly, misty, muddy kind of dreary day. And as he's driving around, he sees a woman uh, standing off the side of the road by her car. She was very elegantly dressed. And she was standing next to a great, big, luxurious vehicle. So he stopped. And he got out of the car, he introduced himself, he said, Ma'am, my name is Brian, and it looks like you could use some help. Can I change your flat tire for you? 
and the lady was very grateful and, and Brian got to work fixing the flat and the lady was on her way home to St. Louis. She had about three hours left. She was driving across the country and this young man will never know how much he came to her rescue. Three hours from home, stuck in the middle of nowhere, not knowing how to change a flat. She was very grateful that this was a kind young man that stopped because almost anyone could have stopped and come up on this woman. And it took Brian about 10 minutes to jack up that car, to replace the tires, to, to wet the jack down and put the old tire in the trunk. It took him no time off. And when he was done, he, he thanked the lady for allowing him to help her. And she told him, you will never know what you've done for me today, how grateful I am. And she said, let me pay you for your trouble. And the young man said, no, I, I don't need to do that. I was able to help someone today, and that's all I need. The woman insisted. So here's what Brian said. If you want to pay me back, then as you go about your day and your week and your travels, do something nice for someone else. And when you do something nice for someone else, think of me and what I've done for you. Because if you do that, you'll create a chain of love. And that chain will go on and on and on. So the lady started to make her way back home. She didn't get very far, two, three, four miles. And she knew she still had about three hours to go. And as she was passing this little roadside diner, she decided to stop. And she, she walked in, she sat down. The waitress, a very uh, nice young lady, the waitress, a nice young girl, came over. And she had with her a towel and a cup of hot coffee. And she said, you look like you could maybe use the towel to clean up a little bit. You look like you've been out in this bad weather. And here's a nice hot cup of coffee. And when you're ready, I'll take your order. And the lady was very taken aback about how kind this young lady was. She seemed to be a, a nice a young lady. Uh, she was obviously about ready. It looked like to deliver a child. She was very pregnant. She looked very tired very rushed off her feet. And so they made small talk. And the, the elegantly dressed lady said to the waitress, it, uh, you seem to be pregnant. Is, is this your first child? And he, yes, it's our first child and we're, we're, we're doing the best we can. And she says, it looks like you're, are you due soon? She says, yes, any week now. I'm supposed to be due next week. And the lady said, shouldn't you be home with your feet up resting? Well, with our first child, we're preparing, we're trying to get as much together as we can, as much money as we can to raise, to raise this child. And they made the small talk, and then the lady gave the young girl her, she, you know, she, she gave her her check, she gave her the receipt, and she gave her $100. And when the waitress came back to give her the change, the lady was gone. And there was a note that said, you were very kind to me, and I'd like to help you. I hope this will help you with your baby. There is no need to pay me back or even to say thank you. For someone else helped me. And I'm creating a chain of love. And all you have to do is do something nice for someone else and keep that chain of love going. And when the waitress, who was very taken back, went to put the note in her pocket, she noticed that the note was wrapped up in something. And when she unwrapped it, there was nine. $100 bills in her cash. And now this waitress was very happy. As she was driving home that day, she thought about the woman and all of her kindness. She thought about how that morning her and her husband got into an argument because they made enough money to pay the bills, but there wasn't much left. And now this baby would have everything that it needed. There was more than enough left. She thought about how a weight had been lifted and how all the arguments between her and her husband on this one matter would now disappear. She thought about how her baby was to be taken care of. And she couldn't wait to go home and tell her husband Brian. Let it sink. <laughs> we go through life as God's obedient children. We have God in our lives so that we can keep that chain of love going. 
we create that chain of love when we come to this table, remembering all that Christ has done and does for us. We create that chain of love when we show God our respect, our obedience, our humility. We create that chain of love when we do our very best every day to put everything in God's hands and let Him worry about what we need to do. We create that chain of love as this congregation, as we have worked hard this past year, as we are in a new phase and a new era, as we celebrate today as the church that we are becoming moving forward. We create that chain of love when we let God be the God of our lives. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us this day. Help us to know your word. Help us to live your word now and always.